Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss a galvanic cell. So galvanic cells are essentially what a battery is. So we're finally going to draw out the schematic of this electrochemical cell, which is kind of cool. So let's start off with a definition here. Galvanic cell, which is an electrochemical cell that converts chemical energy into the important electrical energy. Okay. So now an electrochemical cell is essentially a battery. Okay. And so we're going to draw out the schematic of a very, very simple electrochemical cell, specifically a galvanic cell in just a second, but we got to hit a couple more definitions. So now a galvanic cell is always a spontaneous process. It is something that occurs on its own. So again, let's review spontaneous. Spontaneous. This is a very specific word for chemists or for scientists. It is not, oh, my boyfriend's so spontaneous. He took me to the movies. We went and saw Star Wars and it was wonderful. That is not spontaneous, okay? In science, spontaneous is a process that occurs on its own. And so a lot of people like to add in isolation. So a spontaneous process would be if you have a ball at the very top of a hill and you let go of it, it's definitely going to roll down the hill. That is a spontaneous process that's going to occur by itself, right, every single time. So now the last thing that I want to define is what electricity actually is. And this is really in the context of electron transfer, specifically in a battery, okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. So electricity is basically, in the most simplistic terms, is a difference in potential energy that allows for the transfer of electrons. And I actually want to add one more piece to this, okay? This is considered a spontaneous process. for a battery, okay? So let's just back up. A battery is an electrochemical cell, but it's specifically a galvanic cell because it is a spontaneous process that occurs on its own in isolation. So we can easily transfer an electron or more than one electron from one system to another system just because they have a difference in potential energy. So you bring these systems close enough together but not touching, and this difference in energy levels makes the one electron want to jump to a lower energy level. It is spontaneous for a battery. All right, so now I'm gonna draw this out. Hang on, okay? Hang Hang on, I know this is complicated, but we're going to draw it out. So the first thing I want to start off with is an electrode on the left side, okay? And then I'm going to bring it up like this. We're going to attach it to a voltmeter, and then we're going to bring it down, and I'm going to attach it to an electrode on my right side, okay? So let's label some things here. This is an electrode. This is also an electrode. So just think like chunk of metal, okay? And then the V is your voltmeter. So now I'm going to add more to this. So I'm going to put the electrode into a beaker, and then I'm going to fill the beaker with some kind of solution. Okay. Same thing with my other electrode. Another beaker, and I'm going to fill that beaker with a solution. Then what I'm going to do is connect the two here. I'm going to bring this all the way into the solution. Let me make sure I draw this properly. All the way in. This is what's called a salt bridge. Okay, so now we've labeled, I think, everything. So now what we want to do is come in and kind of provide a little bit more information. So let's start with the voltmeter. The voltmeter simply measures the voltage, or it measures the electricity. It measures that transfer of energy from one system to another system based on potential energy, okay, just like what we just talked about. Now, on my right side, I have a very specific electrode. This is always, always, always going to be your cathode, always, okay? The cathode is always on your right, and a cathode always is going to be a reduction reaction, always. It is never going to be oxidation. It's always going to be reduction. So now some people remember this as red cat. That might help for you, but you just need to understand cathode, 
right side, always reduction. Now let's go to our left side, the electrode we started with. So if that other one's a cathode, this must be what's called an anode. And an anode is always where you have an oxidation reaction. Always, always, always. So some people think the A's and the O's go together, so you're looking at your vowels. And then you've got red cat on the other side. So that's just kind of some little tricks to try to help you remember that. All right, so now the last thing we need to talk about is our salt bridge, which basically is just something that allows for ions to travel in order to balance charge, okay? And so what happens is you begin to build up charge on one side or the other. And so what happens is these ions that are sitting inside the solution, okay, so sitting down here, they're able to actually transfer through the salt bridge to the other beaker to make sure that you don't have a buildup of charge. And the reason this happens is because electrons, oh, this is important, okay, electrons always flow from your anode to your cathode always. You are never going to see electrons flow from your cathode to your anode. I don't even like saying that. I don't even want you to hear those words ever. Electrons always, always, always flow from anode to cathode. In fact, that's so important. I'm writing this down. Okay. Electrons always flow from, from your anode to cathode. Okay. Fundamental piece of a galvanic cell. Now, the whole thing that I just drew out is an example of a galvanic cell or an electrochemical cell. Okay, now by it being in a galvanic cell, we're just indicating that it's a spontaneous process. All right, we'll talk about the other stuff in a second. So, now I want to do two questions here. The first one the anode is always on the blank side of a galvanic cell. Okay, I'm looking for a direction. And the second question is going to be a blank reaction. I almost said it. A blank reaction occurs at the cathode. Okay, two questions. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. If you didn't, that's okay. But the big thing you need to know is you need to get this schematic down. Everything that I just drew out there, you need to make sure that you can draw it out, make sure you have it memorized, and make sure you know every single little piece of information that I wrote up there as well. So let's go through two of the most important pieces. The anode is always on the left side. Always, always, always. It's never going to be on the right. It's always going to be on the left, okay? And then the second one is a blank reaction occurs at the cathode. Cat, cat, think red cat. This is definitely going to be a reduction reaction, okay? These are things that need to be innate. You instinctively know you can just pop them out really quickly, okay? All right, so now let's do another example here. I'm going to tell you, and I won't always tell you this, but I'm going to tell you that at the anode, we're going to have an oxidation reaction, and my example here is going to be zinc solid, and we're going to convert it to zinc 2 plus, which is going to be in the aqueous state, and two electrons. And then I'm going to tell you that my cathode, which we obviously not now know is a reduction reaction, okay? And we're going to look at something like copper. So we're going to look at copper 2 plus in the aqueous state. We're going to add two electrons to copper 2 plus, and then we're going to end up with copper. And then if we don't have anything written there, we know that that's definitely a zero, so copper zero in the solid state. So what I would like you to do now is add these two reactions together, these half reactions together, and come up with the total chemical equation, okay? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, but if you didn't, that's okay. This is just something you definitely need to practice. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your electrons can cancel each other out. So I see two electrons on my reactant side, two electrons on my product side. We're good. We cancel this out. Now look at everything else. I have zinc zero going to zinc two plus, not the same thing, can't cancel this out. I have copper two plus going to copper zero, not the same thing, can't cancel this out. So what we're going to do then is just add everything else together to come up with our total chemical equation. So we have copper two plus 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 zinc goes to zinc two plus plus copper, okay? And so now if you wanted to be completely accurate with this, you would definitely add in your phases. So we have aqueous, solid, aqueous, and solid. Hopefully that was a semi-easy one for you. So now what we wanna do is ramp it up a notch. So instead of using copper, we're gonna change our reduction, our cathode reaction. So I'm gonna keep my zinc reaction going from zinc to zinc two plus plus two electrons, but this time I'm going to change my cathode or my reduction reaction to be silver plus, plus an electron going to silver, which again is zero, okay? Same thing as before, I want you to come up and solve with your chemical equation. Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, but if you didn't, that's okay. This is definitely one of the more challenging ones that we've done. So remember, the first thing you always do is check. 
do my electrons cancel out? And right away you should see a big red flag. You see two electrons on your product side, one electrons on your reactant side. So you absolutely need to do something to adjust your silver equation. So I see that I have two electrons in my zinc equation, so what I want to do is multiply everything with silver by two. So this becomes two silver plus, two electrons, and two silver zero. Now we check, do my electrons cancel? Do they, are they balanced? Yes, so what I can do is cancel both my two electrons out, then I check everything else. Zinc zero, zinc two plus, not the same thing. Silver plus, silver zero, not the same thing, can't cancel out. So now I just bring everything else down. So my chemical equation for this example, or for this electrochemical cell, or for this galvanic cell, we would say two Ag plus, plus zinc, goes to zinc two plus, plus 2Ag, and that is your overall chemical equation. Okay, a little bit more challenging, but just always remember you have to balance out those electrons. So let's look at a schematic of this, something actually drawn out that I did not draw out, and so let's see if we can look at it a little bit more closely. All right, so what we see first is we have our voltmeter at the very top. Our voltmeter is telling us that the difference in potential energy between the two systems is 1.56 volts. Now we can see on our left side that we have our anode. Okay, our anode is zinc in this case. That's our anode, which means our oxidation is going to occur here. And so then we see our solution is full of zinc 2 plus. We can definitely see that we have a salt bridge here that allows for ions to go through so that we can definitely uh, balance our charge. Then on our right side, we see our other electrode. We see silver. Silver in this case is going to be our cathode, and we know that our reduction occurs here. And then we also see that we have our silver plus ions in our beaker here. So this is definitely an example of an electrochemical cell, of a galvanic cell, because it is spontaneous spontaneous on its own in isolation, all right? So hopefully this makes sense. If it didn't, stop, ask your teacher, send me an email, have a great week, take care of yourself, and drink lots and lots of water.